Guys, if I was to give you the best dating advice ever, not as a therapist, but just as a woman, it would be this. Stop meeting people and telling them what you do like, what you don't like, about your past traumas, your past relationships, how bad people have treated you. Because what you're doing is you're giving them a blueprint on how to manipulate you because they're going to do whatever you like, whatever you don't like, to avoid looking like a red flag. And you're basically saying, look how low the bar is. I'm willing to accept all of this behavior. Allow people to show you who they are before you tell them how to be or tell them what you want. You know, you don't want to give out your romantic resume too quickly. And if people do say to you, you know, what happened in your past relationships, just say, look, I learned a lot. I learned a few lessons and they didn't work out. If a guy made plans with you, but you haven't heard from him in a couple days, you're not really sure if you're still getting together, then you don't have plans. What you have is an itinerary. What you need is a boarding pass. Because what happens when you get to the airport without a boarding pass? What happens? They don't let you on the flight, right? And if he thinks he's gonna pull some shit, like hitting you up a day of, being like, are we still on? No, sir, we are not still on, we're not. Because guess what? It was time for me to catch the flight of my life, you didn't book a ticket in time, and I'm off to the next one. And look, give him a 24 hour window, see if he hits you up, but not day of. And if he wants to act all confused, I thought we had plans. My definition of a plan is actually a time, a place, and a day. I don't know what yours is. Catch flights, not feelings, and follow for more. I'm about to tell you guys the easiest fucking way to flirt with a man. And I don't know why this works, but it, it almost always does. You're going to ask them a fucking question about themselves. It doesn't matter what it is. You play sport? Sport do you play? They're going to be like, oh, I play baseball. And you're like, no, you don't. You don't play baseball. Whatever they say, invalidate them. Make them feel like you don't believe them. They're gonna do whatever they can to convince you. It's the easiest flirting technique I've ever fucking used. They're always being like, oh my god, she doesn't think that I really play baseball? Ooh, let me show this girl. Men are so fucking easy. If the guy you like was really consistent in the beginning, okay, texting you every day, but now he's gotten distant, then here's why. He got really comfortable really fast, and he made the mistake of thinking you were always gonna be there. So instead of doing what most girls do, which is acting desperate and looking for attention, match his energy. Because when you go distant too and act unbothered, you are giving him the opportunity to miss you, and that's when he's gonna realize that he took you for granted. Follow for more, and good luck. So when I was younger, my mom pulled me aside, and she was like, listen, you have got to stop holding on to these shit men because it was so good in the beginning and he, oh my god but I love him okay here's the thing <laughs> you do not understand your relationship until you've gone through these three phases one honeymoon we all know that one two unraveling stage this is when shit goes down and you start to see those bad habits your partner has and you start to see the flaws in the relationship they're there look harder Third, realization stage. Oh shit, this is what I'm dealing with. And oftentimes during this realization stage, we go back to the honeymoon phase and we're like, but that's what it's like. No, 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 that's an illusion. Realization stage is where you keep having the same fight and the same problems arise. And we need to learn how to get ourselves out of that. The next time someone asks you why you're single, say this. Because sweetie, I'm selective. And since I know what I bring to the table, I'm not afraid to eat alone. Literally mic drop, they won't be able to say anything to that. Follow for more and good luck. What not to say on a first date? Well, if it's super personal, this is not the time to let the cat out of the bag. Remember, at the very beginning of dating, everybody's giving an Academy Award winning performance of the person they wish they were. And this is normal. You're trying to really showcase your mate status. And the natural progression of intimacy is that it takes time to build. And the way you do it is over ensuing weeks and months, you gently test the waters by disclosing small personal things about yourself. And what you look for after you do that is reciprocity. If the person then feels comfortable trusting you and telling you something about themselves, then you know you're on the right track. It's also possible very early in dating to be honest and authentic by simply saying, you know, I'd like to give you the answer to that question and I hope to get to know you well enough to do that someday. I do not accept a coffee or a walk as a possible date option and neither should you. First of all, I'm not a dog that needs to be walked. Second, I have an espresso machine at home, works fabulous. We're not doing drinks either. You're gonna try to get me drunk and take me back home. No. We are doing dinner. You're gonna pick me up. We're gonna come to the restaurant. We're gonna see your table manners. We're gonna see what you order. We're gonna see, do you hold your chopsticks correctly? 
We're just gonna, you know, study you a bit. Okay, so dinner it is. If the guy you like was really consistent in the beginning, okay, texting you every day, but now he's gotten distant, then here's why. He got really comfortable really fast, and he made the mistake of thinking you were always gonna be there. So instead of doing what most girls do, which is acting desperate and looking for attention, match his energy. Because when you go distant too and act unbothered, you are giving him the opportunity to miss you, and that's when he's gonna realize that he took you for granted. Follow for more and good luck. Three ways to get a guy to like you. Number one, love yourself. Love your body, no matter what shape it is. Love what you do and how you think. Self-confidence is super sexy. Number two, learn to say that big word, no. No is actually the world's biggest aphrodisiac. It shows that you have self-respect and you have boundaries. So no matter what you say no to, say it clearly and with confidence. Number three, don't chase men. We value what we work for. Let him work for you a bit. So stop texting. Stop liking his pictures. Stop commenting on his posts. Wait, he'll come around to you. Three major mistakes to avoid making if you're texting a guy you like. Number one, driving the entire conversation. Texting is like ping pong. So if you're asking him all the questions and he's giving you really short replies, then he's not that interested. Number two, checking in. I get that this is an innocent text, but it's also low key desperate because the thing is, if a guy really likes you, you're not gonna have to check in and remind him of your existence. And number three, sending long ass messages, especially with details that weren't asked. Keep it short and to the point. Follow for more. If someone verbally disrespects you, this is the absolute best thing you could say back whether you're a man or a woman I'll explain why after all you have to do is pause and say I'm not interested in being spoken to like that that's it the reason it's the best thing you could say if you're a woman is because people expect you to get hysterical or emotional and then blame you it's a mess and the reason it's the best thing you could say if you're a man is because they expect you to get aggressive this is not aggressive and it's not emotional. You're putting your foot down and you're saying, look, I'm not interested in being spoken to like that. And then it subtly implies that if they talk to you like that again, you're done. Do I support asking guys out? No. Do I support making the first move? Absolutely. And this is how you do it. You're going to pick something relative to what is around you when you see him. And you're going to plant a seed. You are going to open a door and invite him to walk through it. You're going to toss a worm into the water. You are going to put the ball in his court. For example, if you're at a workout class and you see a cute guy, then you could just be like, oh, have you taken this class before? You're drawing attention to what is around you. Okay. Have you been to this workout class before? I've never taken it. I've never seen this instructor like any good. And then he can then decide what to do with that. A positive example, fuck this person behind me, stupid fucking bus. A positive example would be if he was like, yes, my name is Joe, by the way, never seen you here. Let's grab smoothies. Open the door and invite him to come through it. Don't push him through it, invite. And hopefully he does. And if he doesn't, if he cuts a conversation short, that's your answer. Good luck and follow for more. How to make someone obsessed with you. Okay, listen, what I'm about to share is very manipulative and I don't recommend you use it on just anyone. But if you wanna know how, then watch till the end. A lot of people think that if you want someone to be obsessed, you need to play hard to get or ignore them. And that is false. What you actually need to do is send mixed signals. Because think about it. Whenever someone has sent you mixed signals, that's when you've started to psychoanalyze and figure out what went wrong. And that is when you get hooked. So how do you send mixed signals? Easy. You're gonna create pleasure and pain. Let's start with pleasure. Give this person attention, give them hope, let them get comfortable. Almost like they're in an ocean with unlimited supplies of water. Next up, pain. You're gonna take them from that ocean and drop them in the desert. Okay, no more water supply. In other words, no contact. Because that's when they're gonna get confused. And that's when they're gonna worry that they lost you. The less certain they are, the more obsessed they'll become. Tap that plus sign to follow for more and find me on Insta to choose my next topic. Stop trying to change people and fall in love with the potential of who they can be. I spent way too much time in my 20s dating certain guys because I saw their potential. And then I fell in love with the potential of who they are and was surprised when I was disappointed when they showed me their true colors. They were showing me who they were all along. I just refused to see it because I was too busy falling in love with the potential of who I thought they could be. The perfect reply if a guy makes loose plans with you. As in he asks to hang out but doesn't give you a specific time or place. All you have to do is say this. Great, let me know when I should be ready by. Because when you do this, three things happen. First, you're showing him that your time is valuable and that you're not the kind of girl to wait around all day until he texts you at the 11th hour. Second, by putting him in the driver's seat, you are leading with your feminine energy. 
And third, you're giving him the opportunity to be a lot more specific. If he's not gonna come correct, then he shouldn't come at all. Tap that plus sign to follow for more and good luck. Welcome back to Dating 101. What to do when you feel like you're more into them than they're into you. Okay, these are the visuals, so work with me here. So this is you and this is whoever you're talking to. When you feel like you are more into them, your attention is fully turned on them. Well, their attention is just basically at whatever it wants to be. There is an energetic cord between you guys and because all of your attention is focused on them and trying to level the playing ground, they can feel your need for validation and that creates more resistance. Basically, if you're trying to get someone to be more into you and you're still putting all your attention towards them, you're chasing them. And when you chase something, you're implying that it's running away from you. So what you need to do is change the energy dynamic. If you're staying the same in how you act towards this person, nothing's gonna change. You have to shift from a scarcity mindset to an abundance mindset. I'm gonna have to make a part two. Ever wonder why you always seem to be more into them than they're into you? It's because your mindset. So let's fix that. You need to change the energy dynamic of the relationship from a scarcity mindset to an abundance mindset. You're always the one that's more pressed. You definitely have a scarcity mindset. And what a scarcity mindset is, is you're saying that you want this person and no one else out of all the options in the world. If things don't go right with this person, you are going to be absolutely crushed because it's the only person that you want. And you act out of fear of losing someone. So you try to reach for their validation more. While someone with an abundance mindset is someone who is the star of their own movie. They know they are a total catch and anyone would be lucky to have them. It's really about knowing your worth and your value. When someone with this mindset feels someone pull away, they pull away too because they don't wanna be with anyone that doesn't know their value. And as soon as you pull away and focus on your own life, they come right back.